Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and today you're going to see me uh, putting the rear suspension on my car. So it's been a minute, I've been riding on the suspension settings that I, that I, that I set on on it, and then I changed it around, I'm going to explain a little bit of uh, what the changes are and supposed to be, and um hopefully you, you you get it you know you can make this uh racing suspension whichever the hell you you want it to be uh so with all that said let's get on with the video all right so to start before you do anything this is what i will do um if i were you you remove these and that side of this cover's got to be taken off if you want you can remove this i do not need to because i have my brace bar right there and I have cuts uh, let's see I have a little cut right here that I can access so I have cuts where I can access behind here so all you need to do it is loosen this nut loosen this nut almost all the way you don't have to take it all the way just loosen it enough for you to when you're ready to take off the shock then just take off the nut. You don't need to remove any of the mount at all. You don't need to remove the mount whatsoever because the shock that you've been giving, it does not have a mount. So that's all you need to do in the, in the back. This is what you were given. You were given two rear shocks and two coils with adjustable base. So as you can see, there is no actual top mount for it. So you're gonna be reusing your top mount from your original shock. All right, now that you happen to remove this, which it was very extremely risky, the way I removed this spring is just, if you, like, again, if you can find a better way to remove this big ass spring, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, obviously, this is a heavy duty suspension for the police pursuit package. So the spring, it is naturally a whole lot bigger. For regular RT and S60 and cheaper versions of the car, I don't think it will be that difficult or this heavy duty of a uh, shock. So as you can see here, this is the OEM shock that I took out and it's pretty like beefy right here. And it concerns me because I bought an aftermarket suspension. I'm expecting to see this beefiness in here. So I guess I'm going to contact Yellow Speed Racing and let them know, listen, y'all need to up the game up. Um, all right, so let's just go ahead and go for what we came here for. We're going to set up the distance from here to here. So the length of the shock itself. <clears throat> I'm going to be lowering the car in the back for two and a half inches. And so I'm gonna need two and a half inches in here. I'm gonna face these babies right here, right next to each other. The measuring point will be this flatness right here. Because this is where the uh, uh, upper bushing, I mean the lower bushing of the, uh, the mount goes on right here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that I got an equal distance right here, which I need to come up a little bit. There you go. Oh. See. All right. So now that they are as far away as possible, I can take some measurements, and it looks like. Uh, let's see. I don't know how to make this, but I'm gonna put this in here, and give it my best eyeball of a 90 degree. And I'm looking at a good, let's see, a little bit over two and a half. So we're going to turn in this baby a few clicks. Just that much. This is eyeballing. I'm sure there is a better method out there. But since I'm just trying to go as fast as possible because I need to use this car to work to Monday morning. Two and, a half, two and a half inches, so I'm gonna go ahead and lock that. Right there. And 
once we get the shark in the car, we should be able to torque this lock crane or lock nut in place. Now, as far as the spring goes, I believe this goes in the upper section on, on the body of the car, not on the lower, because the lower contour, yes, it will be sitting up in there and it's not gonna go anywhere. The problem that I have with that is that it moves back and forth. It may create some, it may shave up this piece of aluminum. So if I can put it in the solid piece on the upper part of it, and then just adjust it from there, we should be good to go. More like this, it's gonna go like this. So this will go in your lower control arm and this will go on the, on the upper portion of it. So to make it a good measurement, just make sure that you have the same measurement distance from here to the edge on both. And if your car is too high, then obviously take away, remove, change, adjust, whichever it is you want. But I wanted to adjust this travel first because if my car is going to be sitting two and a half inches from this shock, then the travel will, will work better. Let's make sure we have the same distance on both of these. I got one inch there on both. This is a little bit more. There you go. I got one inch in here now. Lock them up in place. One inch, and one inch. And if if you don't have, like I said, if we wanna adjust your right height, cause this is the only way you're gonna adjust your right height. You, you adjusted maximum travel with the shock, but your right height will be right here. This, this is what will set your right height. So I know there's supposed to be a preload, of the spring which that's another thing that I'm gonna check once I put it in there I'm gonna make sure that with the shock fully extended that the spring does not come out that will be what I call it preload All right, you can see that the shock is being held only by how much you left on that knot on top on the bottom right here you need to loosen up this knot this knot and the shock absorber knot right here so once you loosen those knots go ahead and place a jack on the knee to support the suspension system because the moment you start taking these bolts off you would like to play around like crazy um, once you do that go ahead and remove your sway bar link from right here that way you can move very freely uh, you need to be able to open up this control arm the lower control arm all the way down as much as you can to remove the spring. All right, so, so you can see I remove everything like I told you so, um, including the shock, it's all gone. All right, and I removed the spring. I decided not to show you how to remove the spring because uh, it's risky and the, the spring can jump out anyway. So um, go ahead, once you got your spring removed, vacuum all the dirt or just blow all the dirt out of here and also remove this caliper side because it seems that this caliper hose is shorter than the other side and um, when I was trying to take the spring off I was limited by the caliper itself so I removed the caliper out of the way so I can remove the spring that's uh, one empty idea there and it looks like I'm gonna have to replace these lower control arms soon. So, if any of you know where I can get some billet aluminum lower control arms that I can anodize in gold, that'd be great. Just let me know in the comments below. So, now after you're done cleaning, you get your boot, you take it over there, obviously, and place your spring in the boot bushing boot whichever you want to call it but it's easier to place it in here than it is when you go in there so we're gonna go in here make sure that the end of the spring is all the way in there 
that'll be your notion then the next thing will be putting your pre-adjusted top spring on all right and then we're gonna go ahead and remove the zip tie that this baby has right there and put it in where it belongs all right so we got our slide bolt right there for the shock and pretty much what we're gonna do is first things first uh, place the jack underneath the same location where it was before so we can lift up the spring to his location this uh, spring came off there you go this right here it is meant to go inside the hole that is in here it's meant to go in this hole so I'm not even taking this boot off I'm just gonna put that off right there the hole now just make sure it's in there there you have it now the spring has been installed next thing is putting your washer your bushing and the your upper mount bushing which is this is a good opportunity to replace your upper mount uh, bushing your shock bushing whichever you want to call it I, I don't know that's the name but it's a shock upper mount I guess that's the name but it's, this is a good opportunity to replace it uh, if you don't want to replace it like I did I just I'm just reusing what it was there before which is which is this is the washer that come with the shock and I'll leave that there then you're gonna place this bushing right this is the way it was this is the way we put it on just like that Okay, now that we have that there, we kind of aim it like a little bit, jack, the, jack up the car a little bit, there you go. Let it where it sits, I mean I'm, I'm holding the phone at the same time so it's going to be kind of hard for me to do this. There you go. Ah. There you have it. Now once you have this position, go ahead and go on the top of the car and tighten the nut that came with the shock. Use that nut and an Allen wrench to hold the center shaft from spinning. It, use, it, uses, it utilizes a uh, 15 millimeter wrench or 18, 17. The nut provided it utilizes a 17 millimeter wrench I'm gonna use a ratchet wrench with the Allen key and tighten it up up top all right so this is what it should look like once you're done according to my Allen key set it uses a four millimeter Allen key to hold the shaft from turning and a 17 millimeter or 11 16 wrench or socket which way you want now with the jack still holding the whole assembly tightening this nut right here all the way once you're done with that then proceed to put everything back the way it was now in order for me to make sure that I'm level with the other side I simply see this the sway bar is attached to the other side right so this bowl see how it doesn't go in that means I'm not level and both tires are in the air so that's that's pretty much all it means i'm not quite level so it goes in a little bit but what i'm gonna, gonna do is just i'm gonna loosen this baby up and then turn this baby until that becomes level 
And there you have it. Like I said, I loosen up this nut and twisted this. Now, mind you, you cannot twist the shock if it is having some low force. So I'm using a jack to relieve the weight of the spring and everything. Then I can turn it. And now, look, like nothing. It's dead center right there. So there you have it. That's how you make sure you're even Stevens on both sides. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, that was done like about a week ago, and I learned because like I never done this before, so I learned that the input that you put in the suspension, like in the coil or something like that, it will multiply or divide. For example, if you want to, your car to be uh, one inch lower, right here where the wheel, the tire meets the fender well, then you don't put one inch in your coil or on your on your strut. You, or you you just put it on <laughs> you put probably like a quarter of an inch uh it all depends on how long your arm is because the way that it works is like this is where your wheel is your wheel is on this side right but your suspension or your coil uh coil over is in here so let's just say your coil over is in here and your pivot points right here so when this area pushes it makes this one longer so the little bit of input that you put in here over here it becomes bigger Cause it's a radius that's that's how it flexes so if this one is smaller you know you got more over here but you strut still over here so a little bit of push down it makes that more changes on it so that's something that you gotta take in consideration when it comes to adjusting your coils to the right height that you want to now um the manufacturer does recommend for you to use a um to make sure that you at least have uh, two to three quarters of uh, the shock strut, the, the shock shaft stroke, uh, poking out once the car is down. So what I will do for that is like you set it up to whatever settings that you have. You take the measurements in between the tire and the fender, and then put the car down. When you put the car down, then take a measurement again and make sure that the distance it is to that it doesn't really go as much, you know, up. That way you have enough uh, shock stroke uh, there left over for the suspension to actuate. That's the beauty of it. Now, so one bad thing that I have to say about this company is that the shock shaft stroke out of the front coils is not enough by any means whatsoever. I just got done. I came back from Freedom Factory over there in Brandon, Florida. I was racing my car in the oval and I bought them out. And I bought them out, my suspension on this side, um, even though I have a larger, you know, shock struck. Like they told me to preload it about a quarter of an inch on the coil and put a higher, stronger settings on it. And that was not enough. That was not enough. I took it for a test drive and still bought them out, even though it was in the hardest settings. And I ended up taking it all back out Put the preload, put, put one whole entire inch on top of that, so an inch and a quarter of preload, and I still bought them out the suspension. And they should have thought of that, you know, there is racing involved with these heavy cars, and you take turns and stuff like that, you'll bottom out the suspension. But for daily driving, mwah, for daily driving, this car, with the settings that I have it, I have, right now I have it at 25 from soft in the front at 20 and the back from soft and it rides amazingly it rides really good um even when i take turns and it's very balanced very safe and then when i was racing the car at the racetrack man i was taking them turns like like i was on rails but <sighs> you will see in my next video my next video that's the reason why my car is dirty as hell is because i just came back from the racetrack but you'll see in my next video my races uh at the Freedom Factory. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching and joining me on my endeavors. And I'll see you next time.